you can warn people, you can educate people, and you can advise people, but spreading hate is not going to achieve any of those things. Back in a familiar location temporarily, just while I'm between houses, as I am moving house at the moment, or trying to at least. So I'm just here for a little bit, for hopefully a couple of months or so, till I can get a new place. Basically, what is occurring today? Chloe Ting. So I saw this video pop up, said, why the hate? And we're gonna discuss why the hate, and we're gonna talk about a few other things she actually brings up throughout this video. To clarify very quickly, I do need to throw in, there will probably be need for a trigger warning, as I will be discussing some sensitive subjects. So if anything could be remotely triggering, please do not continue with the video. So apparently, I gave everyone an eating disorder. I see a lot of creators online speak about Chloe Ting and how they believe that her content gave them an eating disorder or maybe contributed to the development of their eating disorder, things along those lines. I think it's quite hard to directly say this person did this to me. Although some content may have contributed to the development of problematic behaviours like an eating disorder or over-exercising, something along those lines, I, I think it's quite maybe potentially unfair on Chloe to actually say Chloe gave me an eating disorder as a lot of contributing factors can accumulate the development of th this disorder unfortunately. Some people might even say that my content might trigger some disordered behaviours in themselves due to how I present myself or the content I analyse, things along those lines. So it, it struck me, I'm sure, sure you didn't actually expect this from me. I will probably actually have to back Chloe here. Although I, I can understand how her content could be triggering, I also understand how my content could be triggering. I don't necessarily think it's fair to basically put that that big blame onto Chloe herself directly for, for what she's produced. My, my issues around Chloe were never directly to do with her whatsoever as a person. It was more just about the uh, maybe unrealistic expectations from her workouts and maybe just obviously the titling and what the, these workouts were suggesting. Again, I get, I get clickbait. I have to do it myself, obviously, as part of YouTube. My issues did really largely stem from, like I said, the the maybe unrealistic expectation, false promises, maybe false hope, things along those lines. One-on-one -on -one coaching services. Definitely no hidden agendas from her. She said to give up my workouts and follow her instead. Obviously, I get that Chloe's blowing their names, which I do respect and appreciate, but ultimately, the one thing that you always have to be wary of, when going after creating creators or maybe kind of negatively speaking about creators online, especially these smaller creators when you have such a large audience as Chloe does, you've also got to be wary about what your viewers might do there. So a lot of viewers may see that as an opportunity to then go after those creators because of videos like this. They'll find them. People are very good at finding things online like creators and their profiles. And then obviously it kind of spirals from there, which is obviously going to be problematic and potentially quite, quite risky because you don't know what impact that could then actually have on the creator in question. Do I think it's right for people to be spreading a lot of hate towards Chloe? Absolutely not, because Chloe is a person herself and she will be getting a lot of people coming after her in the comment section and saying some horrible things maybe. I, I don't think it's necessarily right to maybe approach the video in this manner. I know you can say to your audience, oh please don't go after this person, but you can never control what they do. But that's why I think how you deliver your message can be quite important. And that's what I mean by there might be a better way to go about doing this. Me and my room with body dysmorphia and eating disorder at midnight doing Chloe Ting's hourglass challenge. So there's tons of this rubbish on TikTok. It's annoying but I understand why kids say things like this. If you look closely, it's mostly these 18 year old influencers who are trying to hustle and start a business, which means they're out of these. I have given my thoughts and opinions on Chloe's workouts many times, obviously express my potential problems with their promotions and the false expectations and promises, things along those lines. I do understand why a lot of creators do think that going straight for the negativity route rather than the education route might be a good approach. Using their names can be a catalyst for not only conversation, but also a catalyst to attract people who might have been looking for them. So their audience, things along those lines, which is often what I kind of do in my videos is I, I use these, these names as a means of kind of interacting with the audience that might typically be looking for this person, not to say, don't do this, but do this, but maybe to actually say, here's another approach or another perspective. So again, that's why I always say, I'm not trying to bash anyone or go after anyone. I'm merely simply just trying to educate people on what might be slightly better. There's no definitive, this is better than that. It, it very much is dependent on what works for you and the, the person and what you can remain most consistent with. But I do get the, the desire to build a business. And I think especially in my earlier kind of days of this analysis content, I would almost like lean to a similar approach where I would maybe be a bit more negative and dramatic because I thought that's what would help me develop my social media to obviously then hopefully spread a better message and educate people, but also hopefully to build a business where I can provide those services to people to, to help them. Over time, I kind of realized that's not the best approach. It does add to the negativity that's already floating around the world. I figured instead it actually might be best to push, although the titles and thumbnails might be perceived as negative for obvious reasons, clickbait purposes, I did always want to say I'm not really talking about the creative, I'm more educating about the workout of what I'm analyzing or the problem
problem behavior I'm observing here. What's wrong with Chloe Ting? Nothing with her personally. I just ended up spiraling down a really bad rabbit hole of restricting and over-exercising. Okay, so it's nothing to do with me. Why is she creating TikToks mentioning me? I do understand it uh, from both perspectives. Obviously, Chloe's obviously frustrated that they're, they're using her name for the views. Again, I get it. I do understand it. I'm guilty of it myself. Hands up. I do also understand that the spirally nature of why someone's content or how someone's content could potentially be a contributing factor to the development of disordered eating or eating disorders. It's tricky. There's no definitive saying this did that, this did that, whatever it may be. For example, me, when I go through my episodes of obviously not of eating disorders, but of just general mental health spirals, I can often say I was in a bad place anyway. I was maybe a bit more susceptible and vulnerable to certain things. I saw this and that maybe contributed to the spiral that I was already kind of fighty off myself or I was already more potentially susceptible to experiencing. I'm not saying that's obviously necessarily the case, but it's just my thoughts and opinions of what could have been a contributing factor to all of this. I think online it's very tricky because there's so much conflicting information online and so many different things online. And sometimes someone may see a bit of information that might actually enforce a problematic behavior that they're currently experiencing or dealing with. And that could obviously then push them further down that spiral, which is obviously awful and very heartbreaking. It's sometimes it's about identifying was the creator to blame for that? Or was their content a contributing factor due to a place you may have already been falling into? And that that's quite hard to recognize and process something I really struggle with actually saying, was it due to this person I felt this way? Or was I already feeling a certain way? And then this, this content actually happened to just push it a bit further, not due to their intentions or anything like that, but maybe due to where I was in myself. Flip it around, maybe Chloe did contribute to these eating disorders or these spirals for you. I don't know, I can't speak for you, I can only speak for myself. I'm just trying to think of different perspectives of how different things could have contributed to certain outcomes, you know? I also think it's quite interesting to talk about why I believe Chloe gets a lot of hate. First of all, just to clarify, Chloe's obviously gone through that recent lawsuit situation. No, that wasn't me. A few people commented on the video, oh, was, this, was it you? No, it wasn't, of course it wasn't. I guess the answer is, I don't know. I don't hate on Chloe, I don't hate Chloe whatsoever. I don't dislike Chloe. I don't really have an opinion on her. I think her content actually in some cases got better when she was producing a bit more science-based information. But as a whole, I don't have a, an opinion of her whatsoever. I just like analyzing her content because it, it's a good catalyst for conversation of what could maybe be done a bit better, a bit differently, or maybe even just an opportunity for me to provide another perspective. But I think a lot of people hate on Chloe, unfortunately, because maybe she's a big name in the industry. She's a huge name in the industry because maybe they are trying to build a business and get views. Maybe a spiral did occur around the time they were consuming her content or potentially due to her content. I don't know. I can't speak for certain or speak for these individuals. I think there are a lot of reasons. I don't think it's ever really right to hate on somebody. And so I always try and say in my videos, I'm not ever hating on the creator. I'm just analyzing the content. And I think that's what can also be misinterpreted sometimes. Spreading hate doesn't achieve any benefit. You can warn people, you can educate people, and you can advise people, but spreading hate is not going to achieve any of those things. The best thing to do, in my opinion, is to say, this is what this person's saying. This is another perspective. And this is why I'm giving that perspective. And like I said, educate your audience. I think it's our duty as content creators in a lot of cases to then provide some benefit to our audience beyond spreading drama, but potentially into the realm of actually just spreading education and just giving people the opportunity to maybe make a more informed decision for themselves. I don't think hate is necessary. I don't think Chloe deserves a lot of hate. I'm sure a lot of people disagree with Chloe. A lot of people don't like Chloe, but spreading the negativity and spreading the hate isn't going to make that go away. Spreading education and maybe giving a better insight or a different insight might help. That's it. I'm going to try and keep my videos a bit shorter at the moment because in all honesty, like I mentioned in the last video, I'm having a bit of a rough time at the moment and I'm struggling with a lot of things which I will talk about in the future, but it's not something I'm kind of ready to talk about now. A lot of it is kind of the processing of how I've behaved and how I've been these last 12 months of my life, especially as the BPD symptoms have become really quite problematic and noticeable. But I am actually starting at a psychiatric hospital in two weeks today where I will be going through the DBT treatment, which should hopefully allow me at the end of the six months of it to better manage my symptoms and be able to live hopefully better and more sustainable and fulfilling and quality lifestyle for not only myself but the people around me as well. But that's a conversation we have another day. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating my lower energy waffle once again and thank you for tolerating the video.